Today in History. Okay, what's the date today? It's May 2nd, and we're going to continue with our journey to the past. Happy anniversary to my mother and father. Oh, happy <clears throat> anniversary. Yeah, 49 years today. Ah, going strong. 49 years yesterday, excuse me. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but it's still yesterday oh, in Canada, so nice. that works. Yeah, mm. uh, Pretty impressive, I think. Yes, mm. of so course. Congratulations, Mom and Dad. Uh, yeah, today we have one, two, three events to share with our listeners. We're going to get to that in just a moment, but here is the quiz, uh, quiz question that I have for you. One of the most recognizable and iconic paintings in the world, uh oh, <laughs> this is the one I just talked ah. about, isn't it? Is Edvard Munch's number one, The Whisper, or number two, The Scream? Oh. All right, uh, again, one of the most recognizable and iconic paintings in the world by Edvard, M Edvard Munch is number one, The Whisper, or number two, The Scream. Mm. If you know the answer, and if you were listening a moment ago, mm -hmm. then you probably will, right? Put it on our Bundy board or text it in pounder sharp 1045 for 51 to win a Musen mouse, wireless mouse. Ah, uh, wireless mouse. 네. 자, 그 우리 스티브 선생님 대학교 다닐 때그 기숙사 방 안에 벽에 걸려 있던 그림이 바로 이 그림이었다는 mm. 얘기를 아까 했었는데요. So just let us know that you know the answer. Right. Okay, so let's find out what happened today in history. Today in history. In 1860, Sir William Bayliss was born, discovered and coined hormone. 1955, Tennessee Williams wins the Pulitzer Prize for drama for Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. And in 2012, a pastel version of The Scream by Norwegian painter Edvard Munch sells for $120 million in a New York City auction, setting a new world record for a work of art at an auction. Okay, why don't we begin today's journey to the past with the discovery of a key word in the medical world. That's right. Today, we commemorate the birth of Sir William Bayliss on this day in 1860, an English uh, physiologist who co-discovered the gastrointestinal intestinal peptide, the first identified hormone, and he coined the word hormone itself mm. with his colleague Ernest Starling. Ah, 그렇군요. 자, Bayless 와 Starling이 함께 이 호르몬이라고 하는 것을 이제 처음 어, 발견해냈고 또 그리고 호르몬이란 이름도 붙이게 되었습니다. Mm. So Bayless and Starling found that a substance which they first named uh, secretin stimulated the secretion of pancreatic pancreatic mm. I'm sorry juice a crucial substance in the digestive system well this background allowed for the creation for the, of the word hormone based on the greek word for to set in motion. Interesting. The branch that studies hormones is called endocrinology, and the new term coined by Bayliss and Starling sparked intense research during the first half of the 20th century. Uh -huh. Now, interestingly enough, Bayliss was not only Starling's co-worker, but also his brother-in-law. Hmm. Oh, and in a rather strange twist of fate, you know, remember that expression, strange mm -hmm. twist of fate? Today is not only Bayliss, uh, Bayliss's birthday, but also the day when Starling passed away. Isn't that something? Ah, what a day coincidence. To remember. Mm. All right, now let's move to the stage world where a renowned play by renowned writer Tennessee Williams was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for drama in 1955. Mm -hmm. Well, that play was Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, the 뜨거운 양철 지붕 위의 고양이, one of the writer's best known plays and his favorites too. The play was premiered on March 24th of 1955 and it was adapted for both the big and small uh, stages. In fact, the or small screens, excuse mm -hmm. me. In fact, the film adaptation in 1958 was nominated for seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Actor, uh, Actor and Best Actress. Mm -hmm. I never saw the film adaptation actually. I always I, I, I know I saw this film. We're showing a, a clip from the movie, A Cat on a Hot Tin Roof on mm. Buenan Radio right there. That's Paul Newman. And, wow, uh, he young seems, Paul Newman. Right, a little bit cranky. He's not very <laughs> happy. And then there's Elizabeth Taylor. That's Elizabeth Taylor. It, 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 
you never seen her? I've, well, not at that age. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I know what she looks like uh, later mm. on in life, but yeah. Wow, young Robert or Paul Newman and young Elizabeth Taylor. Very right. attractive people when they were young. Mm-hmm. Mm. They, they, right, of course. Yeah. Well, who, and by now, the Now he spe- sells spaghetti sauce. Right. <laughs> Newman's. Yeah. The Newman zone. <laughs> okay, they both passed away, actually. Mm. So who, by the way, were Paul Newman and Elizabeth Taylor, like we just talked about? And however, the film didn't take any Oscar home. Yeah, and the role that Newman played was originally offered to someone else who turned it down. Do you know who that person was? Who was it? Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. Mm, interesting, right? Oh. I wonder what the what the film would have been like if Elvis had played in it, if it had been, I'm, if it would have been as successful. Right. I'm so sorry to all those Elvis Presley fans out there. I am one of one of his fans myself, but I I, I don't think it would have, he would have done well, such a good job though. The biggest Elvis fans have told me that Elvis was not a good actor. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Then I don't have to feel that mm. bad. <laughs> all right. I've never so, seen an Elvis movie though, so. Oh, not even Las uh, Viva Las Vegas. Nope. Not okay. One. Mm. All right. Mm. Da, da, I guess knew that. Da, and then next, uh, we're going to move to two years ago when a record-breaking event took place in the fine arts world. Yes, that was the auctioning of the most recognizable painting in history, perhaps second to the Mona Lisa. We are talking about Edvard Munch's iconic masterpiece, The Scream. We're seeing it there on Point and Radio. Mm-hmm. And uh, that sold for more than $119 million on this day in 2012. Well, this marked a new world record for any works of art at auction. Yeah, this is the one that I have in my room or had in was my room. Was it your mom who purchased? No, that was back in 2000. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> it was not my mom who, who bought this painting. Uh, but, you know, I could have looked on the Internet mm. to find out the meaning of the painting mm-hmm. or something like that. Right. But I never have mm. because and I, and I still haven't to this day. Uh-huh. I don't know what the painting means. I've always liked to just keep it in my own mind mm. and talk about it with my friends and Aww. see what they think. I don't want to know the answer, Aww. if you know what I mean. Yes, of course I do. Yeah. Aww. I think I've looked it up like once long, long time ago and mm-hmm. it obviously depicts some like insecurity, mm-hmm. okay. feelings of insecurity of the, the modern people. Right. So don't know what to do and then screams at something. But I've often wondered why is he front and center in the painting and then there are two individuals behind him. Right. And then is that some sort of boardwalk? Who are those individuals behind him? Mm. What are they doing there? What are they looking at? Why are the shapes?